Hello and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hi, my name's Zoe, thank you so much for clicking on today's video, I really do hope that you decide to subscribe and also turn on your notification bell and if you're a current subscriber please make sure that your bell is on as YouTube doesn't like suggesting true crime content. So today we have another true crime video. I really feel that I'm now getting back into the swing of things. So hopefully I will have loads of content coming your way. I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support on my first true crime video back on this channel. It really meant a lot to me that you guys enjoyed the video. So thank you for commenting and liking and just being lovely. Today we are talking about the murder of Kelly Ann Bates. I just want to give a disclaimer that some of the information in this video may be distressing. I have tried to minimise the video and the information in general as much as I can just to make sure there's nothing too explicit in this video but even listening to it can be really hard. So I will give warnings prior to any of the more disturbing parts of the video. This case has been dubbed one of the most vile cases in Britain's history. That's why I've left a lot of information out. If you do want to take a deeper dive for yourself into this case, you can do so but do it at your own caution. There is very little information online about Kellyanne, about who she was as a person or her personality. So that means I'm gonna have to tackle this video at a totally different angle. It seems like in this case, we only have information about her killer, which is so sad. As you're aware, usually we talk about the victims, the life they lived, their personality, and the type of people they were, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that in this video. Kelly Ann Bates was born on the 18th of May 1978 to her parents, Margaret and Tommy Bates. The Bates family resided in Hattersley, Greater Manchester in England. In 1995, when Kelly Ann was just 16, she walked into her family kitchen to tell her parents some good news. She had a boyfriend, James Smith. Kellyanne had only just left high school and decided to move in with James and of course this was a shock to her parents. This was her 16 year old daughter telling them that she wanted to move in with somebody that they had never met. But nevertheless Kelly moved to Garton in Manchester to be with James. When her mother first met James Smith she felt disgusted. The hers stood on the back of her neck. It was clear to her mother Margaret that James was older. She just had this utter strange feeling in the pit of her stomach and she vowed to do everything she could to keep her daughter Kellyanne away from James. Her mother Margaret was not wrong to feel this way. James was older. In fact, he was 30 years old. He had also started a relationship with Kellyanne when she was just 14. And unfortunately, her parents were unaware of both these facts. There was many things that people didn't know about James, especially his past and his relationship with women. James Smith was unemployed and living in Garton. He had gone through a divorce with his wife of 10 years in 1980. James abused his wife every single day and luckily she managed to flee and get a divorce. Shortly after he started a relationship with 20 year old Tina Watson and they were together for around two years. During the relationship she endured daily beatings and was abused by James even when she was pregnant with their child. Luckily, she also managed to flee the relationship. When talking later about the relationship, Tina had said that James used her like a punch bag. He would punch her in the face, hit her with an ashtray and even kick her between the legs. It got so extreme that James tried to drown her in the bath. Tina had a really lucky escape. In 1982, James started an illegal relationship with an underage 15 year old girl. Sadly, this young girl was also a victim of James's violence. Not only was she being taken advantage of, he was abusing her every single day. He was beating her daily and even tried to drown her in the kitchen sink. It is very sad that given this man's track record, he was just left to his own devices to hurt women in this way. In 1993, he met underage 14 year old 
Kelly and Bates. They had met each other when Kelly Ann was babysitting for a friend. He again somehow managed to start an illegal relationship and take advantage of an underage girl. It seemed like the people around James were really unknown to the type of person he actually was. He was a violent man but all his friends said that he was a nice man. He was lovely to get along with. He was well kept. He was house proud and he didn't smoke or drink. He seemed like the perfect man, the perfect person to be with your daughter. But as we know too well on this channel, sometimes everything is not as it seems. Once Kellyanne had moved in with James, her family started to notice that over time, something wasn't quite right. The couple were getting into arguments frequently. Kelly would often go to her parents' house, stay there for a couple of days, and then would go back to James once everything had calmed down. She was definitely backwards and forwards and this just showed that their relationship was definitely rocky. Over time her parents started to notice bruises on her body but every time they asked about these bruises there would always be an excuse Kelly had always had an accident whether she bumped her arm or fell down the stairs. There was always an innocent answer. In December 1995, Kelly had decided to leave her job. She just turned up, quit and didn't leave any explanation. Which in itself was very strange as Kellyanne really enjoyed her job. She also became very withdrawn from people around her. She spoke to her family less and less. On her parents anniversary in 1996, they received a card but only James had signed it. The situation in itself got so strange that people around her were starting to notice. Her family were concerned. So her brother would go round to the house that they were living in and ask to see Kellyanne but James would just tell him to leave. Even a neighbour was concerned about Kellyanne's welfare and when they asked James about it, James just said she's fine then went upstairs and showed Kellyanne to the neighbour from the upstairs window. On the 17th of April 1996, James Smith walked into a local police station and admitted to accidentally killing his girlfriend whilst they was having an argument in the bath. He had claimed that she had inhaled some water. He also claims that he tried to do resuscitation but was unable to save her. Just a little heads up that this part of the video is going to get a little bit more graphic. Police immediately investigated his reports and attended James Smith's property in Gorton. When they arrived, they found 17-year-old Kellyanne Bates' body naked, covered in blood in the bedroom. Kellyanne's blood was throughout the property. Police started to gather as much information as possible and started to establish exactly what happened. A post-mortem examination was conducted on Kellyanne's body. The examiner who conducted the post-mortem said he had never seen anything like it in his whole career. Kelly Ann's body had over 150 injuries. It was also determined that Kelly Ann had been tortured for over a month by James Smith and she spent most of her time tied up to the radiator by her hair. Over the last month of her life, Kellyanne had been burnt with an iron on her arms, legs and buttocks. She had stab wounds all over her body that had been caused by blunt knife and forks. She had broken bones. She had stab wounds inside her mouth and her face had been badly cut. The worst of all is that James Smith went on to gouge both of Kellyanne's eyes out while she was still alive three weeks before her death. He even went on to try and scalp her while she was still alive. When researching this case it made me physically sick to think about the excruciating pain that this young girl went through. She was tortured for weeks on end and I just can't imagine that. As well as her injuries, she was also starved and at the time of her death, she hadn't drunk water in seven days. This wasn't caused by a snap of anger or an outburst. This was definitely planned and built up to. He was deliberately causing pain to Kellyanne. Ultimately, her cause of death was ruled as drowning. During the trial, James Smith denied the torture and murder of Kellyanne Bates. He said that it was Kellyanne who used to wind him up. Apparently she used to torment him about his mother's death. 
He also claimed that Kellyanne would cause injuries to herself to make it look like James had done something really bad to her. But this was him classically trying to turn the tables on the victim when it was pretty obvious from the evidence that he caused her death. When asked why he blinded, stabbed, tortured and killed Kellyanne, he said that she had dared him to do it. It took only one hour for the jury to find 49 year old James Smith guilty of the murder of Kellyanne Bates. He was sentenced to a life imprisonment but he only has to serve a minimum of 20 years. The judge said that James Smith is an abuser of women and he would make sure that he would never get the chance to abuse anybody else. During a murder case or any case in general the jury are shown pictures of evidence pictures of the injuries and pictures of the body. The jury that attended this case were traumatised afterwards. They had to receive medical assistance. They had to receive medical help for their mental health because they were that traumatised after seeing the pictures of Kellyanne and the injuries that James Smith had caused. They needed therapy because what this man did stuck with them. I cannot imagine what Kellyanne went through before her death. There is no way that I could imagine a pain so unbearable that she must have felt. Sadly, this case is one of those cases that will stick with me after reading all the information on this case. It has truly made me sad. Usually with cases I can brush it off, but this is not one of them cases. This will definitely stick with me. Sadly, whether you're male or female, this happens too often at the hands of violent partners. If you're going through a tough situation at the moment, please speak to somebody. Please reach out. Doesn't matter your gender, your age, your sexual orientation, none of that matters. Just reach out and speak to somebody because there are organisations out there what can help you and can save you from the situation that you're in. I will leave contact information in the description box below should anybody need them. So that is all for today's true crime video. I am sorry that it was a little bit more of a shorter, more graphic sort of case. Personally, I've not seen this case done by any other true crime YouTuber so I thought it was the perfect time for me to talk about it. Yes, the video itself is a little bit shorter because I have left information out as there's only so much I can put on YouTube and also I don't want to trigger anybody. I don't want to upset anybody because that is never my intentions. So that's why this video is a little bit shorter. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you give it a massive thumbs up. Leave me a heart emoji if you're here to the end because that engagement actually really helps me and I found that out on your last video. The more engagement I get, the more likely YouTube's gonna push my video out there and it's very rare that any of my videos are monetized. So you know what happens to videos that aren't monetized? They don't get recommended. So give me that engagement because it really, really helps. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. I've got so much content coming up for you in the next couple of weeks. So that is all for this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a massive thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and I shall see you in my next true crime video. Bye.